Hi everybody! I am Net Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to apply an extremity restraint. So in this example, I'm going to be doing a restraint on the patient's wrist. Before we would give a restraint to any patient, right, we need to determine their need for the restraint. We need to do a full assessment of the patient and we need to get a doctor's order. This isn't something that we're just going to do willy-nilly, right? This is something we need a doctor's order to do. So we're going to wash our hands, provide privacy, identify the patient with two identifiers, name and date of birth, and we need to do some education about this. So we need to educate the patient, or if the family member is there, we're going to educate the family as to why we are doing the restraints, because this is a medical intervention, and they have the right to know why we're doing the things we're doing. We're going to be doing a wrist restraint, and we're going to be using a posy. So if you've seen these before, this is kind of what they look like, okay? So there's like a white here, and then the inside is blue, and then it has the buckles and the straps, okay? So to put it on the patient's wrist, the blue side, which is considered like the softer side, okay? This side goes and touches the patient's skin. So we'll do it like this. Then you're going to use the Velcro, and then you're going to use the buckle, and you can tighten and adjust the buckle. How do you know if it's too tight or too loose? You should be able to fit two fingers underneath. If it's too tight, that won't do that, and it'll cut off the patient's circulation, and obviously that would be bad. If it's too loose, you could fit a lot more than two fingers underneath there, and then it could fall off or the patient could get out of it easier. So you want to make sure that it's tight enough, but not too tight to cause harm. The next thing we need to do is attach this part to the bed. So the first thing we do is Unbuckle this, and now we have this separate strap that we're going to use, and we're going to attach this to the bed frame. Very important that we attach this to the bed frame and not the side rail. So to attach it, you see how it has this like little loop end in the buckle end? You're going to go here, and then you're going to hook that through so it's nice and tight like that. Then you're going to take this piece, and attach the two. Now it's attached, but it's a little loose, right? It's not quite tight enough. So then you need to adjust it so that it's appropriate for the patient. They need to have a little bit of wiggle room, but you don't want it to be too loose where they can get out. So now it's in, it's secure. A lot of times you'll have a lot of like extra hanging out. That's okay. What you'll do, just tuck that under the bed frame and it's fine. So now your patient is nice and secure and they're safe. A patient in restraints needs to be assessed every hour by the nurse. So what are we assessing? We're assessing the restraint itself, right? Making sure it's not been damaged or it's gotten twisted or it's too tight or too loose. We have to assess the continued need for the restraint. So maybe, yeah, an hour ago when we placed the restraint, the patient really needed it. But now time has passed and they're acting differently. Maybe they don't need it anymore, right? So we have to check, do they still need it? We have to do, you know, their A&O. So can you tell me who you are, where you are, what the date is? Assessing their level of consciousness their behavior. So are they nice and calm and cooperative or are they screaming them trying to pull out their tubes? So how are they acting? We need to do a set of vitals on them. We need to address nutrition and hydration. So have they eaten? Do we need to help them eat? Can we give them a little break from the restraints so that they can eat? What about, you know, going to the bathroom? Do they need to get up and go to the bathroom? Do we need to give them a break so we can help them go to the bathroom? We need to do range of motion exercises on them. And most places have like certain policies about that. They'll say like every two hours you need to take your patient off restraints, give them a limb break and do range of motion exercises on that area. But that's gonna vary depending on where you work. And then we also need to check the area where the restraint is. So we need to check for like circulation. We need to check for color changes like pallor or cyanosis. 
edema, we need to check capillary refill, asking them if it's painful, if it's red, asking them, you know, do they have any numbness or tingling in the area? So we want to make sure that this is safe for the patient and isn't causing them harm. So we need to check them every hour and we need to make sure that everything's okay. And if it's not okay, we need to change it. Restraints do require a doctor's order, and if the need continues beyond 24 hours, they need to be renewed every 24 hours. It's not a standing order where they can put it in and it just stays that way for a week. It's not that kind of thing. So they do need to be renewed every 24 hours, so that is something you as the nurse need to keep an eye on if you do have a patient in restraints. So I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.